<laughs> and slowly. Thank you. Um, just before um, I get started, can I just check? Has everybody, I know Margarita asked you, I got one of these. No, no. Um, Jenny, there's some spare ones um, on my, by my machine. This is going to be very important. This is, um, this is for a prize. I'll explain shortly. This is an opportunity to win a prize. You need one of these if you want to win a prize. Um, you need one of these. What's the prize? I'll explain. I'll explain. Um, yes, but sorry. Actually, the let me just check the presentation. That's not open on the first slide. So let me just get that sorted out. Um, Margarita, sorry. Can you? Uh, so it's from. Yeah. Oh, no. Ah, Not from the midway point of the, <laughs> of the project. So, everybody got one of these. Thank you. So, um, I have a very, very um, short space of time to talk about and, and share with you um, really where we are in the Creative Museum project with um, our own analysis of best practices um, within the project and within the partnership. So, uh, Cecile introduced the project, the aims and objectives um, of the project. One of the first outputs of the project is to, um, or was to, gather together as many case studies as we could from across um, our partnership. So we have case studies from the UK, from France, from Italy, from Finland, from Norway. Um, Don and Jasper also uh, contributed um, case studies, also from Croatia. So these are in no way um, exhaustive. Um, but they are representative of the activities that are happening um, within um, the partner organisation countries. But what we really wanted to do was really bring those case studies together to think about how we could compare common themes and common ideas within these, these variety of case studies. The first step of that process was to really think about um, defining our project. Creative Museum, it's a very big umbrella, uh, it encompasses lots of very, very big ideas. Um, if I could just turn it over to the floor, I mean, if you think of the idea of uh, uh, Creative Museum, what is the first word, and one word only, that springs into your head? Can I have some just hands up and, and shout out? What do you think of? Yes. Fun. Fun. Excellent. Yep. Any other? Any other ideas? Interactive. Interactive. Excellent. Inspirational. Yeah, inspirational. Um, so, one thing about the Creative Museum for us was actually trying to think about what it is and what it isn't. Um, but also to be prepared for surprises along the way in terms of the case studies that, that we were collecting. And there were some, some interesting case studies. I think for us, um, we talk about the Creative Museum um, a lot. We talk about um, interacting with the maker community. We talk about digital engagement. We talk about creative industries. But actually, it's so much more than that. And some of the unexpected outcomes um, of the project and, and of the case studies so far have been the more um, interesting and innovative partnerships that have come about. Partnerships um, with academia, um, partnerships uh, with the health sector. So these are pushing beyond our own expectations of what the Creative Museum is. So we were thinking, um, you know, I think a lot of people who are from museums, a lot of people who are used to working with um, audiences, with publics, are very used to working to an extent in a creative way. Who here has uh, organised um, a workshop with an artist? Coming into your museum, to your gallery, to your library, um, to work with audiences. Who has worked uh, with a storyteller? 
who's worked with a, a musician or, or a dancer. Yeah. So I think traditionally we think of these as creative practices within museums. But these are things, I'm not saying that these are things that are not exactly bad, but these are things that we are doing really well already. We know um, often how to find really good artists who can work with our audiences. We know um, perhaps where we can find really good storytellers, um, really good play ways of um, interpreting the collection. But how do we push that further? How do we find new projects, new ways of engaging collections that open our minds to the way collections are seen and interpreted. And this is really what the Creative Museum is about. Um, for example, in the UK, um, the British Museum worked with uh, the Northern College of Music, um, and uh, about 20 students were given an object from the collection to interpret, to create an individual and unique piece of music. This is going a step further from uh, a, a traditional uh, performer or performance within the museum space. So it's going that step further. It's looking at co-creation, co-curation and participatory practice. Uh, so how do I click? Sorry. So one of the key things for us um, as a partnership, and you may disagree um, or dispute some of these, uh, this, this definition, but for us, the Creative Museum, or in the Creative Museum, so as a concept, the visitor engages with the collection, the building, and the people to make or create something. The Creative Museum is about opportunity, doing, making, experimenting, innovating, making connections, opening up museums, learning. But also, um, for us, it's also about things that are concrete um, and things um, and ways of interpreting um, collections. So, we developed a methodology to define our engagement in a way, um, in a way that we could understand and analyse the case studies. Um, there's a lot been written on um, participatory practice. Um, who knows the work of um, Nina Simon in the US? Um, she's written a lot about participatory practice, um, models of engagement. Um, very, in, in a very similar way, we borrowed some ideas and um, thought about um, our types of engagement. We're making no judgment. I think this is really, um, really important. I've been to lots of conferences where people have talked about co-curation, co-creation. This is the model. This is how you have to do it. But it doesn't, what we recognise within the Creative Museum project is that you have to define a model that works for you, a process that works for you. Not every institution has necessarily has the same freedoms. Um, we all sometimes face restrictions in the work that we do. As, as, as much as we like to break down boundaries, but we do understand that actually sometimes restrictions re exist. So it's not making a judgment. Um, so if your organisation can, if the, and if funding um, is only available for a short-term project for a workshop, great, that's one level of engagement. If you want to go all the way to completely creating a museum from scratch, with public participation, great, if you, can, if you can do it. So we're looking at kind of different types of engagement. Now, this brings me to my piece of paper. Um, now, one thing um, that has become apparent in our partnership within the project, um, and also when we talk and explore the idea of Creative Museum, is words and language and finding a common ground and a common language. Now, in museums, uh, we tend to use a lot of jargon. Um, these are words that have come up a lot within our project. Um, so we have innovative or innovation, uh, partnership, digital, audiences, storytelling, collections, potential, and building. Uh, do you all know the, uh, the game, we call it in the UK, bingo? Bingo. So every time I say one of these words, you cross it off. So this is also to make sure you're listening as well, that you cross off the word. The first person to put up their hand and say, bingo, 
So it's a bit like bing bong, but bingo. Um, wins this book. Um, I have nothing to do with the publication of this book, but um, it's uh, been recently published in the UK. It's called The Misfit Economy. Um, and it's not about museums, but it's about, um, it's called Lessons in Creativity from Pirates, Hackers, Gangsters and Other Informal Entrepreneurs. So um, it's just to keep you, keep you listening. So, yes, be, beware. Thank you. Okay, so for us, the first type um, or, or potential approach to our engagement within the Creative Museum or in the Creative Museum framework is a workshop or short project. Visitors come, make, create something. It could be facilitated by a member of museum staff or a specialist. It could be a hacker, a maker, a digital specialist. So there's an, an interaction between um, the visitor, the collection, and the workshop facilitator. Um, what we're seeing across Europe is this increased um, commitment to dedicated spaces within a museum where creativity can take place. And that could be um, a maker space, um, a fabrication lab, a hacker space. Um, it could be a dedicated digital space, a, com a, a computer area. So this is a space where visitors can come and participate in the creative process. Longer term engagement. Visitors engage with the museum over a period of time. This is what we see more in co curated projects and co curated um, exhibitions and displays. Another step visitors remix the museum or remake the museum to reinterpret collections. They're working, um, the visitor themselves is taking a much more active um, engagement within the process, within that dialogue. And something that is entirely permission free. Visitors do their own thing. This is not um, something that is necessarily um, uh, orchestrated um, or developed by um, the museum. Visitors come with, um, or without um, without that permission, um, their interpretation is free. There is no agency, as it were, on behalf of the museum. So what I'll do in a short while is present a very short collection, two examples within each um, category or type of engagement. Within, um, within the project we collected, I think, somewhere in the region of about 30 different case studies. Um, I only have 20 minutes, so unfortunately, I'm unable to present every case study, um, but all the case studies will be published um, following this conference um, in a best practice or compared analysis um, publication, probably towards the end of the year um, by the time we finish um, editing it. We're also hoping to also produce a, an e-book as well with a longer form of each case study. So if we think about an, a basic analysis, I love workouts. It tells you, um, you, know, you put in your data, you put in your, um, your case studies, you put in uh, your analysis, and these are the key words um, that the museum, um, that the work cloud comes up with. Um, you can't mark these off on the sheet. I have to say them, not, um, <laughs> not read them. But you will see that a lot of our keywords um, on our finger um, are represented here. So how does that morph into the key findings so far um, within the project? One of the things actually I also think is really keen to that I'm very keen to, to see and to stress within the development of, of the analysis of the project is the opportunity to also track certain projects through their life cycle. Um, when we collected the case studies, I wasn't necessarily, we weren't necessarily looking for the finished project. This is a project that's finished. Very much excited about work in progress. So we've got um, projects from Finland that are in their first year of the project. Um, projects from France, a, a, a new space at Cap Science that hasn't even opened yet. Because what we have an opportunity here is not just to see what practice is happening now, but by tracking different examples, we can see how they've developed through the, the lifeline or through the lifetime of the project. We have three um, planned written outputs for the project. This is the first one. 
So we're just coming to the end of our first year of the project. We have a small um, analysis after our museum mix training, um, which uh, you'll hear about more, muse more about museum mix which will come out probably in the middle of the next year. And then our final publication will be a toolkit um, that represents the, the lifestyle of the, the lifeline of the project. So the key findings here, um, lots and lots of keywords, communication, language is so important, and finding a common language. Um, what we found is that um, Jenny illustrated it really clearly, um, the communication with, um, with the science gallery, communication with the maker community, and meeting the expectations of, of communication. People have different formats of communication. Some people will only respond to email. Increasingly, some people will only respond via you know, uh, me messaging services. They won't necessarily pick up the phone. Some people like to meet. Okay, some people are quite shy. They like to be in their own space. So it's finding common ground of communication um, and not underestimating that. Partnerships and relationship building. So looking at partnerships perhaps outside um, traditional museum partnerships. And I think Ineta is going to talk more about the creative industries. Um, so I won't say too much about um, to partnerships. Um, there's also been a really um, useful toolkit that's just been produced by the Northern Ireland Museums which is talking about working with um, creative industries. And that toolkit also shares lots of the ideas that we've also been exploring within the Creative Museum. I should also say that the first stage of our gathering, of our case studies, was a, was a literature review, looking at what has already been written, looking at what, what has already been um, spoken about. But we did find some really surprising um, partnerships and really surprising um, relationships. Um, so there, is there anybody from Turin here? No. No, there's um, one, of, one, of our, uh, from one of our case studies from, from Italy is from the Palazzo Madama. Um, do you, is that, did you write that case study? Thank you. <laughs> and um, fantastic project, working with young mothers, working with hospitals. Um, that's a very new and creative way of working. Um, so and there's lots of things, for example, happening in the UK, working around mental health, working with, with um, the elderly. Finding, as I said, Finding a common language. One of the problems that we've had even within our partnership, we all, um, I think, as a partnership, I hope I can say on behalf of our partners that we have a fantastic sense of shared goals and aims, but we all come from very different types of institutions. We have um, two, muse two museums, but one museum is a museum without a collection. Uh, we have a hacker and a maker. Um, we have uh, the Finnish Museums Association and a collection of museums. Um, in South Trondheim in, in Norway. So it's a really um, mixed, uh, mixed partnership and even between us trying to find a common language and trying to find that common language between you and the people um, that you're working with. And then let's just think now actually about one of the things that was really interesting to me um, that came out of the case studies is that a lot of things that have been written in, in, uh, in museums, at museum press, blogs, is all talking about, yes, the visitors want to do this. The visitors want to have um, a new experience. And yes, they do. They, I think certainly um, when we talk about millennials and we talk about young people, perhaps they do want to engage with museums in different ways. And they do want new experiences or to experience the museum in different ways. But it's not just millennials. It might be people from um, who don't usually visit museums. And when I talk about museums, I'm talking in the broad museums, galleries, uh, archaeological sites, heritage sites, um, ships, open-air museums. So I should have said that at the beginning. So when we talk about museum, it's not just um, a museum space. We talk about personalisation, but these things are where lots of museums are going and lots of museology is going. But actually, um, visitors don't always want to have or be seen. Um, that some visitors actually still want to have quite a traditional museum experience. They want to be told what to do. So we also have to think about how we work with our visitors. A lot of this work is about challenging the museum and museum practices. Um, 
and a step forward from this project is looking at how um, attitudes change within museum management. Jenny um, talked about her museum um, and changes within um, the director, sort of you know, director level or senior management level within the museum, and the ownership of projects. Planning is key with any of the projects or the work uh, that we undertake and that kind of goes in with um, programming and the reason we do that is the opportunity and the potential um, to reaching new audiences um, whether that's um, millennials, whether that's using digital technology, whether that's using people coming into the museum etc. We talk about using technology, we talk about um, a lot of uh, digital engagement, digital tools, but actually one of the really interesting things that came out with a lot of the case studies um, is that technology fails. Um, and that can be a problem, that can be a problem um, with your audiences, that can be a problem um, for the people you're working with. You know, it could be that you um, are intending to do something with um, some hackers and your Wi-Fi fails, or that you want people to to use their own handsets and actually it turns out that the version of um, operating system on their on their Samsung or their Apple is not appropriate. It cannot manage the technology that you're trying to get them to use. So we always have to think about that using the right tools um, for the job. Technology is great and can give us lots of um, opportunities but we need to find the right tools for the job. And actually one of the things as well is that it's very easy to get very carried away um, with this work or, or working creatively, but actually losing focus on what, as an institution, as a museum, a heritage site, an art gallery, um, an archaeological site, what it is we are about. Actually, you know, we are here because um, they might, of, of collections, um, of the research. So it's always thinking about actually maintaining focus and relevance. <coughs> Funding um, is important, obviously, but also one thing actually has come out of the case studies is that actually working creatively can open new opportunities for funding. Um, opportunities through academic channels, um, opportunities through um, perhaps charities, um, working with mental health or working with older people. So we're moving away from traditional funding streams um, where um, funding might be given for museum projects. Um, time management I think nearly all the projects in time management on that point, um, time management, um, nearly all the projects talked about um, the difficulties of, of time within, um, within their uh, projects and sustainability. How you, um, even if that's a museum space, how you work forward. Now, um, as Jasper has just said, I have completely run out of time. Um, and the final thing is um, to be prepared for surprises. Uh, before he curses me, um, I will just very quickly zip through a um, couple of projects. So projects and workshops, we've got um, uh, Norway uh, via uh, Marsala here in Italy, working with hackers and hackathons in Finland and Croatia, working with the maker community in Croatia and Dublin, dedicated museum spaces, uh, for example, Cap Science, uh, the Oslo Science Centre, um, co-curated exhibitions, um, again, working with um, different audiences, older audiences or younger people, um, the Helsinki City Museum um, or the, the project here in Norway longer-term projects um, the, uh, about building long-term relationships. I mentioned the Palazzo Madama and the Hatworks in the UK. Different ways of working with collections. Getting people um, outside your curatorial um, expertise to help you understand and interpret collections. Um, two really nice examples of um, remixing or remaking the museum. Um, Derby Silk Mill work completely collaboratively um, to redevelop um, their museum. Museum mix you're here from, and permission free. Um, I really um, strongly suggest it's not a European example, but Museum Hack um, in the US. Um, 
it's a an interpretive project. It's a storytelling um, project. It's a storytelling experience. Very, very innovative. Um, and then uh, traces in. Ah, thank you. <laughs> well done. And traces in France. Last case study, fantastic example, started with a shell um, and uh, worked together with a university partner to create a, a museum of humour, scientific humour. Lots of case studies, um, look out for our publication, keep um, following us on Facebook, on Twitter, on the blog, you'll see um, all of these case studies represented and I also just want to say a big thank you to the partnership. Um, who collected everybody tirelessly uh, within their own countries collecting these case studies and anybody here from Italy who contributed um, case studies via Margarita. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>